Dear students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Mary Vinita Thomas, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, Central University of Kerala. Today, we will discuss the module on teacher education in UK and USA. The main objectives of the module are being acquainted with objectives of teacher education in UK, gain insight and reflect on the historical perspectives of teacher education in UK, gain insight and reflect on teacher education in UK during the modern period and get insight on the type of training colleges in UK, be acquainted with and reflect on the curriculum of teacher course in UK, develop a better understanding of the classification of teachers, their service conditions and selection of trainees in UK, to provide an insight into the teacher education system in USA and reflect on the same, to develop a better understanding of the objectives of teacher education in USA, to gain better knowledge on the special features there regarding teacher education, to get acquainted with the different types of teacher education they have, to gain a deep insight and thus reflect on the courses and curricula of teacher education programs in USA, to provide a better understanding of the service conditions of teachers in USA. So first, we move on to teacher education in UK, objectives and historical perspectives of teacher education in UK. In the United Kingdom, teachers training was under voluntary organizations before the Education Act of 1944. At present, local education authorities are generally responsible for organizing training of teachers. The minimum standard of ability of teachers is prescribed by the Education Ministry. The National Advisory Council of Education, appointed by the Education Ministry, solves problems pertaining to teachers' training. The Education Ministry prescribes qualifications for admission in teachers' training institutions and determines the curriculum. It distributes teachers' training facilities as per needs of various schools in the country. Now let us see the objectives of teacher education in UK. The first one, to provide the theoretical awareness of teaching philosophical, sociological, psychological and economic foundations of education, to develop skills and competencies for using teaching methods, techniques and teaching aids in the classroom, to develop the abilities to deal with the problems of classroom teaching by using action research, to develop the right type attitudes and feelings for national integration and international understanding, and to provide separate objectives of teacher education for the different stages like for pre-primary, primary, school and college teachers. The historical perspective. First, let us have a look at the perspectives on teacher education in UK during the early period. During the early period, they had the monitorial system. This was a system, a method of elementary education devised by British educators Joseph Lancaster and Andrew Bell during the 19th century to furnish schooling to the underprivileged even under conditions of severely limited facilities. It was sometimes called the mutual or Lancasterian system. In this system, all students met in one room with about 10 students and one monitor to each bench. The monitors, older and better students, were instructed directly by the teacher and they in turn instructed the other pupils. It was often assumed that the monitors would eventually become teachers. As the system suffered from a number of defects, it was abandoned and replaced by the pupil-teacher system. So what is this pupil-teacher system? According to this arrangement, Pupil teachers were chosen at the age of 13 from among the most promising pupils in an elementary school. They were formally apprenticed to the headmaster for a term of five years and were examined on a prescribed graded syllabus at the end of each year. If they acquitted themselves creditably, the government paid the headmaster a grant of five pounds for one pupil, nine pounds for two, and three pounds for each additional one. At the end of the apprenticeship, that is at the age of 18, the pupil teacher could appear for departmental examination. The successful candidates were awarded 
the Queen's Scholarship, which entitled them for a three-year course at a training college. At the end of it, they qualified as certified teachers. Next, we have the Bursar and Student Teacher System. According to this system, the pupil in a secondary school was allowed to remain there up to the age of 17 or 18 as a bursar and then proceed directly to a training college or alternatively he could become a student teacher spending half of his time in actual practice in an elementary school and continue his studies in the secondary school during the other. This system of preliminary training of teachers has been continuing even these days with some modifications. So now students, uh, we shall discuss some of the reports on teacher education in UK during the modern period. One of the most important is the McNair Report, 1944. Summary of the report, some of the major recommendations are as follows. The first one, pupils who might consider becoming teachers should be encouraged and enabled to stay on at school up to the age of 18. Maintenance allowances should be offered to suitable older men and women who wish to become teachers and their salaries should reflect on their age and experience. Adult education courses should offer opportunities for learning about the educational system. Rules relating to teachers' conditions of service should be relaxed. The salaries of teachers in primary and secondary schools should be substantially increased. There should be a basic salary scale for qualified teachers with additions for special qualifications or experience. Large schools should have a deputy head and very large schools can have two. The Board of Education should recognize only one grade of teacher, namely the grade of qualified teacher. The Board of Education should establish a central training council charged with the duty of advising the board on creating the area training service recommended in the report. Area training services should be the responsibility of either school, university schools of education or reconstituted joint boards. The content here and the final assessment of students should be the responsibility of the area training authority subject to compliance with the requirements made by the Board of Education. The normal training course should be of three years for graduates and other suitably qualified persons one year with flexibility in appropriate cases. Newly qualified teachers should be required to serve a probationary year in school before confirmation of their recognition is decided. Next, the James Report, 1972. Some of the major recommendations of the James Report on teacher education and training are, teacher training should be seen as falling into three consecutive cycles. The first, personal education. The second, pre-service training and induction, the third, in-service education and training. A new two-year qualification, the Diploma in Higher Education, together with new three-year degrees based on and developed from it, should be introduced into the first cycle, initially in the Colleges of Education and the Polytechnic Departments of Education. Teacher training should be administered and planned by regional councils for Colleges and Departments of Education, RCCDEs. Also, a National Council for Teacher Education and Training, NCTET, linked with the RCCDEs and representing all branches of teaching profession should be established. In the third cycle, all teachers in schools and full-time staff in further education colleges, FE colleges, should be entitled to paid release for in-service education and training for not less than one school term every seven years. There should be a national network of professional centers and teachers in schools and colleges should have opportunities to take part in curriculum development projects, etc. Moving on to the next report, which is the Robbins Report, 1963. Some of the major recommendations here are, the three-year course for trainee teachers should continue but four-year courses leading to a B.A. degree should be provided for suitable students. Teacher training colleges should be renamed as Colleges of Education. Conditions of service for teachers in higher education should be such as to attract recruits of the necessary caliber 
and any disparity between the incomes and prospects of teachers doing similar work in different universities should be removed. Teaching and research are complementary, so research should not be removed from universities and concentrated only in research institutes. Teaching methods and arrangements should also be reviewed. Then we have the Central Advisory Council Report, Plowden Report, 1967, titled Children and Their Primary Schools. The report of the Central Advisory Council was published in 1967. It recommended the following. More graduates are required in primary schools and more facilities should be provided for their training. Arrangements should be made to inform schools of the record of their former pupils in colleges of education. Graduates should be required to receive professional training if they are going to teach in primary schools. There should be closer partnership and contact between schools and colleges. The arrangements for teaching practice should take account of the needs of the schools. More joint appointments to college and school staffs should be made. The normal period of probation for untrained graduates and for teachers trained outside the UK should be two years. The BA degree courses should be made available to serving teachers also and a network of residential teachers courses should be developed. Now, let us move on and have a look at the structure and curriculum of teacher education in UK. First, we will see the types of training colleges in UK. In United Kingdom, an institute of education is regarded as the leading center of teachers training. All the teachers training institutions are affiliated to it. Two types of training institutions are found. The first, teachers training institutions which are controlled and supported by local education authorities. A partial grant is given by the education ministry and rest is responsibility of local education authorities. The second type, teachers training institutions which are controlled by voluntary organizations and supported by public funds. Here, half of the grant is given by the education ministry and the remaining half by voluntary organizations. Moving on to curriculum, curriculum of teacher education in UK. The majority of training colleges provide a two-year course. The curricula of these training colleges is approved by the Board of Studies of their institutions of education. However, the details are worked out by the training colleges themselves. Today, the curricula of training colleges in England generally include the following kinds of studies and practical work. The first one is academic studies. This part of the curriculum aims to impart a sound general education to the students. It is therefore devoted to an advanced study of selected school subjects. The next one is professional studies. It is intended to give the students a thorough grounding in the principles and practice of teaching. It includes the study of principles and practice of teaching, health education, history of education, and educational psychology. Opportunities for specialization are also provided in one of the following two branches, teaching of young children in infant schools and teaching of pupils in the age group 7 to 11 in junior high schools. The third one is practice teaching. As in India, we all know, we call it internship. It constitutes the practical part of the course. Though no uniform program has been evolved for it, students are normally required to teach for a total period of 12 weeks under the supervision of all faculty members. In UK, the curriculum has also been developed according to the following stages. For each stage, we have a separate curriculum, teacher education curriculum, like first stage being teachers of primary schools, teachers of secondary schools, then special teachers and teachers of arts and vocational institutions, and finally, teachers imparting further education. So let us see the classification of teachers, how exactly teachers are classified. In UK, teachers may be classified according to the various stages of education. The first one being primary school teachers, as the name suggests for primary school stage. Primary school teachers get their training in training schools. General certificate of education is the minimum qualification for the admission. 
Minimum age for admission is 18 years and duration of training is for two years. Along with professional subjects, education is also given in general courses. For teaching in a nursery and primary school, this training is necessary. The next one, secondary school teachers. Secondary school teachers are called trained graduate teachers and after their training, they can teach in a secondary school or in a university. Training is compulsory and duration is of one year. Training is usually given by teacher training departments of universities. So the third one is teachers of specific subjects and of arts and vocational schools. There are separate training institutions for training teachers in subjects such as painting, music, dance, arts, physical education and domestic science. The duration of training for physical education and domestic science is three years and for arts and music it is four years. The general certificate of education is a minimum qualification for admission. The fourth one, teachers for further education. For such teachers, special training is not necessary as the experience in work concerned is considered as equivalent to training. Experienced people in various industrial and commercial institutions are appointed as teachers for further education in the related subjects. Now let us see the selection of trainees, how selection is being done in UK. Selection is made through teachers associations and through direct selection from schools. Lady teachers are one third in number of those selected. The women trainees for specific subjects are selected from women who have completed their general education and have worked for one or two years in the industrial and commercial organizations concerned. The male trainees are directly selected after they have completed their minimum general education. Moving on to service conditions of teachers. The managing committee of a school appoints teachers on prescribed service conditions. In aided schools, the manager appoints the teacher and in schools run by voluntary organizations, the teachers are appointed by the managing committees. Local education authorities and association of teachers work together in devising service rules, which are determined in terms of the recommendations of the Burhan committee. Teacher's salary is prescribed by the education ministry according to the Education Act of 1944. The Education Ministry fixes the salary of teachers of training colleges and universities based on the advice of certain committees represented by teachers association, training colleges, education departments and local education authority. There is a little variation in the salaries of headmasters, male teachers and lady teachers. Teachers are also given some additional increments on acquisition of some special qualifications. So that was about teacher education in UK. So now let us have a glimpse of teacher education in USA. First, the historical perspectives and objectives of teacher education programs in USA. Coming to historical perspectives, in the colonial period in America, the only requirements for teaching in the lower schools were a modicum of learning and a willingness to work in what was then an ill-paid, low-prestige occupation. By the 1820s and 30s, however, teacher training became common in all the academies, the equivalent of today's secondary schools. Many women excluded from men's preparatory schools could obtain an education only in such academies. The nation's first private normal school, a two-year post-high school training institute for elementary school teachers was opened by Samuel R. Hall in 1823. The first state-supported normal school was created by Massachusetts in 1839. With the assistance of Henry Bernard and Horace Mann, the number of normal schools in the United States increased rapidly during the latter half of the 19th century. Since their sole purpose was professional instruction of elementary school teachers, an especially strong emphasis was placed on the psychology of child development. Training for secondary school teachers remained primarily a function of liberal arts colleges 
until after World War II, when growing numbers of students, a strong rise in the average age of leaving school, and the growing need for technical skill in the nation's workforce led to a demand for secondary education that traditional colleges could not meet. Since 1945, consequently, most teacher colleges have expanded their educational missions and have become liberal arts colleges offering a broad general education in addition to specialized courses in pedagogy. In the United States, the first graduate program in education was established at New York University, 1887. In the following year, the teacher training school that is presently known as Teachers College, Columbia University was founded. Since the establishment of those two institutions, graduate study in education has expanded rapidly. Now let us see the major objectives of teacher education in USA. First one, to develop teacher education program in accordance with the democratic way of life, to provide an open environment to the pupil teachers so that an appropriate development of their personalities can be made, to provide theoretical and practical awareness about the teaching learning process, to develop the skills and competencies of teaching methods, techniques and teaching aids, to prepare separate teacher education program for distance education teachers, to develop the feelings among pupil teachers but in a form accordance with democratic form government, to base the teacher education program on the local needs. Every University of USA has its own model of teacher education program. Let us now see some of the special features of teacher education in USA. The first one is the no national system. So what is the no national system? There is no national system of teacher education in America as there is a lot of variety and flexibility. Numerous kinds of institutions from high schools and county normal schools to education, departments of universities are having their own programs of teacher training with hardly any uniformity in their curricula or system. According to an American educationist, there is no one way to educate teachers and no one type of institution is best suited to the job. The next salient or special feature is equality of opportunity. In the American system of teacher education, there is equality of opportunity and men and women from all sections of society, high and low, rich and poor, have an easy access to institutions preparing teachers. The third one is the cooperative enterprise. The system of teacher education is a cooperative enterprise and not the monopoly of one single authority or agency. It is a partnership between state agencies, local organizations, teachers training colleges, universities and liberal arts colleges. Now, let us have a look at the structure and curriculum of teacher education in USA. To begin with, we'll have a glimpse of the types of teacher training institutions in USA. The first one, normal schools. The purpose of the normal school was to establish teaching standards or norms and hence its name normal school. Normal schools were established chiefly to train elementary school teachers for common schools known as public schools in the United States. Both public and private normals initially offered a two-year course beyond the secondary level, but in the 20th century, teacher training requirements were extended to a minimum of four years. By the 1930s, most former public normal schools had evolved into teacher colleges, and by the 1950s, they had become departments or schools of education within universities. The next one, teachers training colleges. During the second quarter of 20th century, some normal schools were replaced by teachers' colleges with more progressive and modern teacher training institutions. As it had the support of the teachers, teacher educators and numerous public organizations, including that of National Education Association, the movement gained momentum. The period between 1920 to 1992 was a period of revolution and expansion for teacher training. In USA, training colleges are run and managed by the state. 
teachers for primary and secondary classes are awarded bachelor's degree after training. In order to add specialization, there are some colleges which are conducting five-year courses instead of the four-year ones. A number of these colleges offer courses for master's degree in education, while a few of them even offer PhDs in teacher education. Some of them also undertake training of specialist teachers and offer courses for colleges and university teachers. Next we have departments of education. Departments of education were created as a part of bigger liberal arts colleges and universities. The Iowa University was the first to create a separate department named Department of Pedagogy for training teachers in the art of teaching. Its success inspired many other universities and liberal arts colleges to follow suit. The movement gained nationwide momentum and practically all institutions created departments of education. The main function of these departments had been to impart all-round comprehensive education for the prospective teachers and provide facilities for further education and research in pedagogy and methodology of teaching. Then we have the schools or colleges of education. The establishment of university departments of education and liberal arts colleges started a new movement of creating autonomous schools of education in different universities and colleges of education. The schools and colleges of education became popular because of their internal autonomy, independent administration and financial management. They controlled their budget and granted their own degrees to the successful candidates. They developed more intensive program of teacher education and gave a new dimension to the professional training of the would-be teachers. They produced the most relevant literature in the science of education that had been lacking in the 19th century. Now let us have a look on the courses and curriculum of teacher education in USA. Every teacher training program in America includes the following three basic components. The first one, general education, next professional education, and then specialization in a particular field. So what is general education? Most of the institutions teach general education to the prospective teachers for at least two years to help them to take a suitable place in contemporary society. The objective of this type of education is to impart cultural, social and academic background to the persons of other vocations in a complex society. It includes orientation courses in humanities, social studies and sciences. At times, they also provide introductory courses in separate subjects and focus on developing communication skills, which is very important. The next one is professional education. It aims at imparting professional skills and techniques to the teachers under training. It is divided into two parts, the theory part and the practice teaching part. In the theoretical part, it is introduced in the first or second year of the four-year course and is continued till the last year. The subjects include observation and reading, educational psychology, American public education, methods of teaching, school and community relations, introduction to philosophy of education, student teaching and special methods and electives in education and psychology. The practice teaching part, we are all familiar again. Practice teaching or student teaching is generally introduced in the later part of the professional courses undertaken by the student teachers either in the laboratory school or the university campus or in the regular public schools. It includes observation of lessons, participation in criticism or discussion lessons and finally actual classroom teaching under the skillful guidance of the supervisors who are members of the College of University faculty. Practice teaching is also known as internship in teaching it envisages the student teachers working continuously for eight or nine weeks under the supervision of one or more senior teachers of the cooperating school. Then they have subject specialization. This is for pupil teachers to acquire proficiency in the subject or subjects of their choice. Like we have in India too, subject specializations, science students opt for science, 
the language students can opt for a language specialization. Nowadays, many institutions offer specialization in integrated fields or subjects like social science, languages, general science, etc. in consonance with the curriculum of the schools. So that was about the curriculum, the different types of training colleges in USA. Now, let us have a look on the provision for research in education in USA. In order to make teachers well qualified and up to date in knowledge, the provision of research work is made for them. The universities conduct refresher courses for those who are engaged in teaching and also provide research facilities for trained teachers. In USA, Harvard University provides opportunities for getting higher degrees and professional qualifications under supervision of experienced guides or supervisors. Service conditions of teachers in USA. Services of teachers are based on an agreement between the management and the teacher and on the rules framed by the government. After completion of training, the candidate sends application to the teacher employment agencies. These agencies keep a record of the teachers and then contact local education control units for their needs. According to the demands of these local education authorities, the teachers are then selected. In some places, teachers are directly send their application to the local education control units. Teacher employment agencies are private, community, governmental and public. The salary scale of the teachers depends on the economic status of local bodies. These local bodies prescribe salary scales of teachers according to their economic conditions and need. The salary scale of rural area teachers is less than that of urban area teachers. Increase in pay depends on the increase in state income. There is a National Association for Education for teachers at all levels to undertake developmental programs related to philosophical and professional outlook of teachers. So this was about teacher education in USA. Now students, uh, let us have a brief review of this module. For like first, we saw the objectives of teacher education in UK. We got an insight on the historical perspectives of teacher education in UK during the early and modern period. Like in the early period, we discussed on the monitorial system, the pupil teacher system, the bazaar and student teacher system in UK. And in the modern period, we also got a glimpse of the major recommendations on teacher education mentioned in important reports. We also reflected on the structure and curriculum of teacher education in UK and it gave us an insight on the type of training colleges, the curriculum, the classification of teachers and the service conditions of teachers in UK. Then we went through the historical perspectives of teacher education in USA where we discussed on the objectives and salient features of teacher education in USA. And finally, we reflected on the structure and curriculum of teacher education in USA and it gave us an insight on the type of teacher training institutions, the courses, curriculum and the service conditions of teachers in USA. So now we conclude the module on teacher education in UK and USA. Thank you.